In this lesson, we're going to cover uh, installing the Ionic CLI on your machine. Uh, we're going to generate an Ionic project, and then we're going to talk through uh, some of the files and folders in an Ionic application, just to start getting uh, familiar with what's happening. So we're going to start out by coming into the documentation here, and we can find uh, the installation uh, section, and that's going to tell us how we need to go about uh, getting the Ionic CLI set up on our machine. And so the Ionic CLI is the command line interface, and it's just basically some tools we can use to help us generate uh, Ionic applications, help build them. Uh, we can generate pages and services with it. So you can use Ionic without doing this, but I definitely recommend uh, installing the CLI. So as you can see here, it says all we need to do is run npm install g Ionic to install Ionic globally on our computer. And for some of you who are watching this, you may already have Node.js and NPM set up on your machine. Uh, but if you don't, you'll need to install Node.js first. And so you can do that just by visiting the Node.js website. Just download the latest uh, LTS release. And once you've finished installing that, you'll be able to open up your uh, terminal and run the NPM command, which is going to allow you to install this. So I've already done that. So I'm not going to run that command now. But uh, if you haven't already installed Ionic, you just run npm install g Ionic, hit enter, and then that'll handle installing it for you. And so once you do have the CLI installed, we can generate a new application. And to generate a new application, we can just write Ionic start. And then we want to give it the name of our project, which we're just going to call uh, Ionic to do. We're going to use the blank template. And since Ionic is currently in beta, it should be out of beta pretty soon. But at least for now, we need to also supply the type equals angular flag. And that's just going to let the CLI know that we want to generate uh, an Ionic 4 project. Uh, once it's out of beta, you'll likely get a, a project selection screen that you can use to choose what uh, version of the framework you want to use. So we'll just hit enter and we'll let that project generate. Uh, so you can integrate Cordova with uh, your application. We're going to be using uh, Capacitor. Uh, so we're always going to say no to this, uh, to this question uh, throughout the book. Uh, but we're not really going to be worrying too much about native functionality in this uh, video course. Uh, so we'll just say no to that. And after a little while, it's going to ask you if you want to install the Ionic Pro SDK. Uh, the Ionic Pro SDK provides some uh, extra tools that you can use in your Ionic application, uh, but we're not going to be talking about that or using it just now, so we can also just say no for that. Uh, you can install it later if you like. Okay, so now the application is generated. All we have to do is change into that directory by running cd Ionic to do. And then we can serve the application in the browser by running Ionic serve. So that'll uh, load the application up in the browser. Okay, so you can see the blank uh, template we have now. Uh, it's a good idea, to, uh, good idea just to hit uh, inspect and launch it in the little uh, device simulator that's built into Chrome. You can just click this button up here to toggle that. And so we can see, see it in a way that looks more like a mobile application. Okay, so now that we have our project generated, let's jump into the code and just talk through it. Okay, so I've just opened up the uh, project in VS Code. And you can see along the left here, we have all the various uh, folders and files in our project. And so immediately, if this is completely new to you, it might seem a little bit overwhelming. Obviously, there's a whole lot of files here, and you're not going to have any idea what they do. And so it can kind of be confusing just to see, like, where should we start? When building uh, Ionic Angular applications, we're going to be doing most of our work inside of this source folder here. And more specifically, we'll do most of our work inside of the app folder. So you may make some changes to the uh, files and folders outside of the app folder, but the bulk of the coding is going to happen inside of this folder here. Now we have a components uh, folder that's included for any custom components we might add, but we could just uh, get rid of that if we wanted to, uh, because we won't be using any custom components, and it's just going to make the project look a little bit simpler. So what we have so far here is our home page, and that's what you see in the browser, this Ionic blank page. If we, had, if we take a quick look at the HTML page here, the template for that page, uh, you'll see what we're seeing on the screen. So our application is going to be made up of various pages that are going to be linked together uh, through navigation somehow. So in the end, we'll have uh, we'll have more of these pages. In this example project we're going to be creating, we'll just have the two pages. Uh, but you could have many different pages here. And basically, the whole process for the application kicks off inside of these uh, this app.component.ts file. So this is your this is the root uh, the root component for your project, and it sort of contains your entire project. And so you see here we have a uh, template URL of app.component.html. So this is the template. 
uh, for this particular component. Uh, so for our pages and components, we'll generally have the, uh, the TS file, the TypeScript file, which is where all our logic goes. It defines the class uh, for the particular component that we're working with. And so this is where all the logic is going to go if you're going to do things like event bindings, listening for clicks, uh, triggering navigation, or maybe even making requests to services to load data from somewhere. Uh, all of that logic is going to happen in these files. And then we have the associated templates, which is the view that the user is going to see. And so you'll see in the case of the root component, as I mentioned, it's the component that contains the rest of the application. All we have is this ion app tag and an ion router outlet. So in general, you usually won't uh, make too many modifications to this root component. We just uh, we have this ion app tag, which uh, surrounds the entire application, sort of identifies it as an ionic app. And then we have the ion router outlet, which is where all of our, our views, our pages are going to be injected. And so our home page that we have is going to be injected into this router outlet here. And then just like our root component, our home page component actually looks quite similar. So we have the TS page. So this sets up some information for the component. And we are going to talk about this stuff in more depth in later videos. So uh, don't worry if you're not really getting this yet. I am kind of just skimming past it pretty quick. Uh, so we have our home page class here. And then we have its associated template, which is the stuff I mentioned before. You can see all of the, uh, the content that we're actually seeing. And so this home page is being injected inside of that ion router outlet. And if we just quickly go back to the browser, uh, we can actually see all those tags in here. So although we only might uh, write a few tags like ion app or ion router outlet, uh, those web components that we're using actually uh, inject more than just that into the DOM, which is what we're looking at right now, the document object model. So you can see uh, the ion app here. And then we also see the ion, uh, ion router outlet tag as well. And then inside of that, we have our app home. Uh, component here. And so that's been injected inside of the router outlet. And then we have all of the rest of what we added to the template. And so if we had more than one page, uh, what is displayed in this router outlet is going to change from app home to something else. And that's where the uh, app routing.module.ts file comes in. So this sets up all of the routes for the application. And all the route basically is, is a URL path that we're linking to a particular component. So in this case, uh, we only have just the home page for now, uh, but we have uh, a path of home, and then we have a load children property of uh, what you see here. And so this is because we're using lazy loading. Uh, if we weren't using lady loading, it would just, uh, sorry, if we, if we weren't using lazy loading, uh, it would just say component, and then you'd have the home page component here. But basically all this means is that when we hit the home path, we want to load the home page. So when the router sees this, it's going to go grab the home.module.ts file. It's going to look at the information in there and load up our page. And so then we might also have an additional path, which we will uh, eventually uh, as we build this application. And we might have uh, an edit path, for example, and then we'd link that to our edit component. And this is how the Ion Router Outlet knows what to display on the, on the page at any given time. Now, you've probably noticed there's also a couple more files here we haven't actually talked about yet. We have the home.page.scss file. Uh, all that is is a file where we can add some styles, uh, some CSS styles for our page. And so all of our page components are going to have this, and we can put whatever styles we want in there. Now we have the module file, which I mentioned briefly just before. This is just uh, including any dependencies that our uh, page needs. Uh, this is something we'll get more into a little bit later. And then we have this home.page.spec.ts file. And now you can just uh, ignore this file, basically. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, it's a testing file. And so we can run automated tests for our components. And these are, these are great, and they're definitely something you should look into. Uh, but it's a little bit more advanced than the beginner level. So uh, if you are new to Ionic, I'd recommend either just uh, probably just ignore this file. You can delete it if you really want to, but uh, just leave it there. It's not going to do any harm. And then when you're starting to get a little bit more uh, comfortable, uh, you can start perhaps looking into how to write tests for your applications. Okay, so we've talked through the main files that we're going to be working with. As I mentioned, we'll mainly be working inside of this app folder. We'll, you know, of course, add more pages and link them together. We'll add some more routes as we go. But most of our work is going to be inside of here. Uh, but there are a few more things we should talk about as well. And we're just going to quickly kind of fly through uh, some of the other folders and files that we have here. And so we have this uh, assets folder, and this is basically just somewhere you can store your static assets like images for your application. 
Uh, you can put them inside of this assets folder and then reference them from your templates. Uh, the theme folder is another important one. Uh, this is where you can find all of the variables that uh, the CSS variables that Ionic's using to style the application. Uh, well, this isn't all of the variables. This is mainly just the, the theme variables, I should say. And so you can come in here if you like, and you can change any of these colors. If you wanted to change the primary color for the application, you could just change this here. Uh, but do keep in mind that there are other colors related to that color. So you've got the primary color itself, but you've also got um, the shade and tint of that as well. So if you do want to change the theme properly, uh, you should check out the tool in here. I believe there is a color generator. Uh, so you can use this to play around and start generating a theme which you can copy into your application. And you can also add other uh, CSS variables in here if you want to override other things. Uh, and again, that's something we're going to get into a bit later. Uh, we have the global SCSS file, and you can just uh, add styles here just like you could in the specific uh, page files. Uh, but these ones are just you know a general global uh, file that we can use to style the entire application. And we, of course, have the index.html file because we are building a website, essentially. And so this is uh, really what kicks off the entire process uh, because you can see here we add the app root inside of the body tag and that's what kind of injects our application into the web page. Uh, this isn't something you'll probably uh, edit. Uh, you might, but you probably won't. Uh, so it's just important to know that this is a website and it's being loaded into the index.html file. Another important file to keep in mind is the package.json file. This is where all of the, depend uh, the dependencies for your application are listed. And you can come in here and you can update uh, dependencies if you like. Say if there was a new version of the Ionic framework coming out, you could update this tag here perhaps and any other dependencies that are required and run npm install. And it's just going to update everything. Uh, you'll also see any other dependencies you've installed here. Maybe you've, you've added some uh, plugins or third-party libraries and you'll see them listed in here as well. And so there's one more important thing I wanted to discuss before we end this lesson, and that's the concept of transpiling. Uh, all the stuff you see here uh, inside of the source folder, uh, all these TypeScript files and whatnot, they aren't the code that is actually run to display our application. All of this code is taken and then transpiled into uh, the uh, built output of your application. And because TypeScript isn't supported uh, universally in browsers. We can't just run TypeScript code in browsers. So this needs to be converted into something that browsers can understand. And so we can't actually see that uh, in the project yet, but if we open up the uh, terminal, and I'm just gonna cancel serving the application by hitting Control C. Uh, if we run Ionic build, that's going to create a build of our application. And this is just a development build if you were to uh, create a production build, an optimized build, you'd want to run ionic build dash dash prod. Okay, now that that build uh, has finished running, you can see that we've got a www folder added here. And so this is the build output of our application. And if you open that up, you see basically a whole bunch of uh, shenanigans in here. You don't actually need to uh, edit any of this stuff. You really don't really need to bother with uh, what's in here. Uh, but if we open up one of these files, you can see that they're all JS files now and you get all this craziness going on. So basically all of our code has been uh, transpiled into just standard JavaScript, and we've obviously also got uh, a whole bunch of other stuff happening in here as well uh, that's making Ionic and Angular work. So yes, you really don't need to know what is happening. Certainly you don't need to understand any of what's happening in here. Uh, just know that everything inside of this www folder, that's actually what gets run uh, when your application's running. Uh, if you were to host this on the internet, for example, uh, the www folder is what uh, what you would be uploading. You wouldn't be uploading the rest of the application. Uh, if you're using Capacitor, for example, you need to point that at some web code. And when we use Capacitor later, we'll be pointing it at the www folder. Uh, and so when you're running your application natively on a device, uh, Capacitor doesn't care about uh, any of this other stuff. All it wants is just your final built output, and that's what it's going to run in the application. So we've just very briefly kind of flown through a whole bunch of really complex and in-depth concepts here. Uh, we will, of course, be covering all of this stuff in a lot more depth. Uh, we'll be touching on it a little bit more throughout uh, this video, uh, but you'll get a lot of the in-depth theory from the book itself. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and in the next one, we're going to start building our to-do application.